Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a multi-piece crown molding profile using SketchUp, and I'll show you one of my favorite extensions for shaving hours off of your modeling time when working with trim and molding. For those of you that are new to my channel, I'm John Kapler, founder of Focus SketchUp, and I specialize in teaching professionals how to use SketchUp and V-Ray in the most efficient way possible. So now that you know a little bit about me, let's dive into it. So I've got my SketchUp file pulled up, and just a blank file. If you have the exact trim profile that you're wanting to model, make sure you have that as an image. And what you do is you import that into SketchUp uh, using the file menu. So file, import. And there's mine right here, crown molding. Make sure this is selected down here as the image, not a texture. So image is selected, click import. And I'm gonna click in the center and then kind of drag it right about there and click again. And I'm not going to scale it here. I know it's tempting to scale it because we have these dimensions, but actually we're gonna keep it in this large format uh, because it's easier for the arc tool to put in a lot of points and make those curves smoother than if you were to put it down to actual size. So we'll deal with the scale later on and I'll show you how to do that inside of the extension. But for right now, let's just keep this large, large and in charge. And I've got a couple different options here. Well, a few different options. I'll go back to my top. So we got a three piece here, that's pretty common. A couple other here, uh, two piece ones down here. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the largest one available. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six piece crown molding. And let's put that into SketchUp here. So first thing I wanna do is anytime I import an image, I like to have that on its own tag. So I'm gonna go to tags here and I'm going to add one called image. And up in Entity Info, I have my image selected and I'm gonna change that tag to image. All right, so now I can toggle that on and off, which is nice. All right, so I'm gonna use just a combination of my line tool and my arc tool to create this profile. So start here, L on the keyboard. I go here and start right there. You can start wherever you want to really, but I'm gonna start there and then just kind of work my way over. And for the arc, it defaults to 12 sides. Let's change that to, let's say 50. That'll give me a smoother curve. So click there and see right about there, looks good. And the profile I found here, this image, you'll see it's kind of, it tries to have this 3D effect on it. You'll see this white area right here. Uh, so we're just gonna focus on the gray because we just want a straight on shot of the trim profile. And a lot of times you don't wanna spend too much time getting things super exact because again, this is a, a very small uh, part of the trim here. So as long as it's close enough, it should be good. Let's see right there. You know what, I'm gonna do escape on that. I'm gonna just gonna tighten this up a little bit because it looks like it ends right there. And then I'll put a line up. Right about there. And continue our way up and over. So keyboard shortcuts, very important. L for line, A for arc. For the arc tool, you of course uh, do your starting point your finishing point, and then you can adjust the arc up or down as needed. Let's see, this is, okay, we'll stop right out there. And I'm just gonna go up here for a second and click here, and then, oops, let's see. Arc, let's do that again to 50 sides. Oops. Okay, there, there, and right about there looks good. But actually I see a little bit of a bulge down here, so maybe control Z that. Again, you don't have to get it too exact, but you do want it more or less lined up. I'm just gonna do it right about there. And you'll see it created a face there because that's an enclosed area. I can just use my eraser tool, delete this line, which will keep the outer 
which is what we want. Okay. So up here, it looks like we've got a little bit of an arc. Followed by a big arc. And I'm gonna change my arc size to 120, just so we have enough points there so it's smooth. Okay. And right about there looks good. And continue onwards and upwards. Whoops, click the wrong area there, just do escape. And then make sure it's on the point. It's like a little bit of a curve here. This is at 120 sides for the small area, so it might complain, which it does. If that happens, just click OK. And let's go here and finish out this section. Back up over here to an arc. Zoom in. Say, skip that. About there. Let's do another arc. About there. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect at this scale, but just trying to follow that gray area on our profile cutout here. Okay, so I could go right to this corner here and then drop down. Um, I like to just kind of see the different pieces if I can. So I'll spend the extra few seconds here and just kind of trace out the back section. I want to make sure it's lined up perfectly with that. Okay, now let's turn off the image. And looks like I've got a pretty good face there. So if I use the line tool, let's just kind of connect one down here. You'll see I've got a face there. And I don't have a face down here, so this tells me there's a disconnect in the border somewhere. And I can use the line tool and just kind of pinpoint where that is. Normally this happens uh, where a arc meets a line. So I can see here, these are both sections, so it's somewhere in here. Let's look at this guy. Nope, oh, and you see it right there, this little gap. So that's the reason why it was not making a face. So if I connect these guys, there it is. And if I delete these lines here, perfect. Now let me go to the top. There's my face. So now that we have that drawn, let's go ahead and click on our Profile Builder tool here. Go ahead and click the plus. This is where you specify a name. Let's call it Six Piece Crown. And click OK. There it is. So we've got our marker here. We want to change that to the top left. There it is. And you'll see here our scale here is way off, right? So 38 feet, not quite. So we know, based on our image, right, that our width is seven and a half inches. So let's change our width to 7.5 tab. And that changes our height accordingly. That's close enough. And let's go ahead and click on save. So now it says, hey, where do you wanna save this? So I wanna go to my main profiles uh, folder. I'm gonna go into crown. And if you don't have a folder for your custom work, I suggest making one. Uh, so for this one, this is a compound crown molding piece. So I have a folder here just for that. Uh, also good practice too, is if you have certain trim pieces that you use all the time, uh, you can save them into their own folder so you can quickly access them. For instance, for um, crown molding, I like to use the crown 104 a lot. And if you go in here, you'll see crown 104 specified. Uh, but for this one, we have a compound folder. I've got a six piece crown. Let's go ahead and click save. And profile is now saved. Perfect. And if you want to go in here and just look at that, you can see here's my six piece crown. If I go up, here is my favorites folder I was just talking about. There's crown 104. So this is how you can kind of see what's in each folder. 
So I'll close out of that. All right, so now that we have that in there, well, let's start using it. Let me go over here and let me just use my rectangle tool. I'm gonna build a room that is 30 feet by 30 feet. Great. Group this, go in here. I'm going to use my offset tool to create five inch walls. Okay, and I'm gonna pull these walls up 15 feet. We got uh, the floor, we'll group and rename floor, and we'll make a copy of that for our ceiling, and rename that to, you guessed it, ceiling. Okay. Now, to actually add it, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'll show you both. Um, one is we can kind of go in from below. Let me just reverse this face. You can see this face on the ceiling is blue. We want to reverse that so it's facing correctly. Perfect. Um, okay. So deselect everything here. All right, so we've got our profile pulled up, six piece crown. And I want to go ahead and use this build. Click that. And then you can just start going through the top of your ceiling, just like you were actually there installing it and clicking on the various points. And if you make a wrong click, sometimes this gets a little wonky, like you see this. I didn't click there, but sometimes this profile tool is a little wonky. Just click the backspace button on your keyboard and that un it will undo your last point. So, there we go. Click in the corner there. And, whoops, I'm in a wall. And we'll click on this. And finally, back to it. And there, we created our six-piece crown group. You'll see it there, it looks beautiful. Very cool. All right, so what's the other way to add this in, you ask? Well, let me show you. Let me select that and delete it. And we're gonna put the floor back and hide the ceiling. So the other way is we can select the path that we want this molding to be applied to, similar to the Follow Me tool in SketchUp. So select all of that, and then use this button here called Build Along Path. Go ahead and click that. And you'll see it worked, but it built it in the wrong direction. So what we can do is Control-Z, and then use this mirror flip checkbox here, click that, and then click this again. There you'll see it builds it for us. So we can turn our ceiling back on and there we go. So as you can see, adding compound crown molding is not that hard when you're using the right tools. And as part of my uh, courses, uh, Focus SketchUp, um, I like to teach you guys how to use the best set of extensions and how to not only learn SketchUp, but also use SketchUp in the most efficient manner possible to save you time. So if you guys are interested in learning more about my program, uh, go ahead and look in the description below. I'll post a link there so you can learn more about that. Um, otherwise, if you did find value in this video, I would appreciate you clicking that thumbs up button below and giving it a like. That helps more than you know. Uh, otherwise, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.